You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Ahead tonight, a major ruling handed down by the United States Supreme Court on Native American hunting rights. We'll explain ahead. Plus, school's almost out for the summer, but construction is just beginning. We're taking you to Lockwood and Summers to show you work being done at Montana schools. But first, the city of Bozeman continues to address a major concern within city limits. We're talking about affordable housing. Well, Bozeman, with the highest housing prices in our state, leaves many people in the workforce struggling to find an affordable place to live. And city leaders know they need to address it. MTN's Emma Hamilton joins us with the latest on the process. Andrea, just last Monday, commissioners approved the next step in the affordable housing work, and that next step is the action plan. Navigate LLC is the outside consultant that's been working with the Bozeman staff on this project. The community housing needs assessment is now complete and is helping the city to continue to move forward with this process. Well, I think the main thing it's going to consist of is that um, the consultants who are experts in this process will bring or present to the to the working group, you know, 15 or 20 tools, they call that, which are things that are done in other communities to relieve the affordable housing, you know, stress or problems. And so this working group will discuss each of those tools and rank and prioritize them. The goal of this action plan is to understand the community housing needs and to design a plan to build more housing for a range of residents within the city. But I think it's particularly appropriate to find housing that is accessible to people who are in the Bozeman workforce. Developers have preliminary plans to build 97 affordable condominium units right here on what would be 8th Avenue if it was constructed. Some of these units would be available to those making 80% of the area median income up to 110%. What makes it feasible is two kinds of incentive funds. So the first one is new markets tax credits. That's the big, the big one. That's a federal program mm -hmm. and it's for investments in things like jobs and housing in uh, what are considered uh, low and moderate income mm -hmm. census tracts, which is wh where this is. Uh, and then the second one is, of course, the tax increment financing funds. This project wouldn't be possible without tax increment financing to support the infrastructure that will be necessary to be constructed for this project. Reporting in Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. All right, new details tonight on a Supreme Court ruling that could have lasting impacts on Native American hunting rights. The case involves a Crow man, Clavin Herrera, and an 1868 tribal treaty. The ruling came down to a 5-4 to four decision with Justice Neil Gorsuch delivering the deciding vote. Herrera pursued an elk across the Crow Reservation line and into Wyoming, and he was charged. Well, today the U.S. Supreme Court affirmed the Crow tribe's hunting rights under the historic treaty is valid. The case would set a precedent for tribal hunting rights now to come. State Auditor Matt Rosendell wants to override a recent veto on a bill surrounding the cost of prescription drugs. The bill places restrictions on pharmacies to prevent higher drug costs. Rosendell says the veto is based on faulty information and now he wants lawmakers to be polled by mail on whether to override Bullock's veto. A fourth person is jumping into the race for Montana Attorney General. Republican Austin Knutson from Culbertson is the second Republican to enter the race. He's a former Speaker of the Montana House. And uh, he's also joining the current Montana Chief Deputy Attorney General, John Benyon, also running. And two Democrats, State Republican Kim Dudick of Missoula and Attorney Rafe Graybill of Helena, are also running. New information tonight on steps to keep Montana safe from seasonal wildfires through mitigation work. Governor Steve Bullock recently created the Montana Forest Action Advisory Council to examine the conditions of Montana forests. Members include those from the timber industry, conservationists, lawmakers, and tribal officials. The group will examine priority areas for treatment. We'll let you know about their findings. It's supposed to come to light in the fall of 2020. Snow season isn't over, especially on Red Lodge Mountain. Can you believe it? It is May. So take a look at this. The ski resort posted this video on their Facebook page. They say they're expecting another, get this, 22 inches of snow this week. Well, Bob McGuire will have more on this wacky May weather in his full forecast it's coming up a little bit later in the show. The Shepherd School District will soon ask voters to help fund major improvements to the school. 
but this after voters already shot down a recent ballot levy. MTN Samantha Sullivan joins us with what leaders are going to do next. A $17 million bond failed earlier this month. Now school officials are back to the drawing board looking to find a path forward. A series of meetings over the next couple of weeks will allow the community to express their opinions on the plans and where they believe the district can cut to make the ask a little easier for voters to swallow. The first meeting is tomorrow night at the high school gym. The district is looking to make major improvements to their existing buildings and add on additional space as well to meet the growth of their student population. Some of the other items the district wants to address include the condemned kindergarten building that students had to be moved out of at the start of this year, as well as building security issues. The district does hope to have a revised bond in front of voters in the fall. And we have an update now on the $15 million remodel of Summers Middle School as crews finally got to break ground, but not without some challenges first. The superintendent says the school sits on a unique makeup of sandy soil, and that makes it challenging for crews to find stability for the foundation. School officials say the addition is badly needed with the growing student population. I mean, we have two bathrooms in the old building that we haven't been able to use for the last year and a half because the pipes that go out to the sewer are collapsing underneath the parking lot. Um, we have electrical issues in most of this building. All right, well, Price says the addition will also provide more space for the Lakeside Middle School. Construction is on schedule and set to be completed by next fall. We do have some new images to share with you tonight out of Lockwood on the construction of a new $50 million high school. MTN Zoe Zandora shows us the progress of the new project. Construction is underway at the new Lockwood High School, set to be completed with updated security, a large gym and auditorium that will seat up to 700 people in spaces for career and tech education. Now, construction of the $49.9 million high school is on schedule, and the superintendent, Tobin Novacio, says things are on a roll. Yeah, I think people are just really surprised at how fast things are going up. I, you know, I, you know, a lot of the, the work at first on any construction project is the in-the-dirt work, and nobody really notices that. And then once that is put in place, then things start to pop up real fast. And, and I think that's been real fun for our community to see that and watch that. And Construction of the Performing Arts Center is underway, being made of precast concrete panels that are 10 by 47 feet and weigh around 26 tons, which is why you can see they have to be individually placed by a crane. What's next? Well, there's many moving parts. Once the auditorium or Performing Arts Center is done, concrete panels will be set for the competition gym. Obviously, while that work's going on, they're still working on the auxiliary building, which is where our high school students will be housed next year. And then if you look over here in the field over here, they're actually starting to do the dirt work and the groundwork for the, the uh, football, soccer, and track stadium. Novacio says it's amazing the work Langlass and Associates have done and how organized they have kept things. We've had uh, approximately 70 construction workers on site every day right now and as soon as school's out in two weeks that number is going to jump up to over 100. Not only is the high school new, the new logos have been revealed as well. Take a look at the Lockwood Lions logos. In Lockwood and a walkthrough for the community was hindered by the weather but we're told that will now happen next Tuesday. So there you go. Continuing coverage tonight as the number of confirmed whooping cough cases in Missoula is on the rise again now to 125. Missoula health officials say the cases are impacting almost every school in the Missoula school district. Whooping cough is sickening children and adults in Missoula, Frenchtown and the Bitterroot areas. Well, folks are encouraged to get their pertussis vaccine. It's even available if you are an adult. People who are exposed earlier in the outbreak can also be re-exposed. New information tonight on the arrest of two Chippewa Cree tribal police officers accused of breaking into a box elder home and assaulting a man, one accused of striking his girlfriend in the face. Prosecutors say Cody Lemur and Kyle LaFromboise broke into the home last month to look for a woman believed to be having an affair. Police say the two off-duty officers hit and kicked a man as the couple slept and then later that day, Police responded to La Framboise's home after that same woman was hit in the face. Both pled not guilty to charges. Both are suspended. Police say a Butte woman being severely assaulted was able to escape her attacker and sought help from party goers at a wedding. Butte police arrested 24 year old Levi Anderson for assaulting the woman. After that assault, the victim ran from her attacker who was chasing her. She ran to the Butte Country Club where a wedding reception was being held. 
Two men from the party then chased after the attacker. They chased him through the Country Club parking lot, across Elizabeth Warren, uh, north on Albany Street, until they, uh, they tackled him on the corner of Albany and East Lake. Uh, they held him there until police arrived there. And Anderson remains jailed today on a felony charge of partner and family member assault. Well, parking is becoming harder and harder to come by in the city of Whitefish, even with a new parking garage in town. According to city officials, lack of employee parking is a big issue. And right now, employees are parking directly downtown, taking up the majority of those parking spaces for customers. City officials say they're working with local businesses to find appropriate parking for their employees. Are there ways that we could expand local transit or have people ride their bikes more, make it more convenient so that um, not everybody has to drive their car to downtown. Now the city is looking to implement pilot parking measures during that busy summer season, which we are almost at. Well, still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, going green. Organizers at the Folk Festival are drumming up a new plan to cut down on plastic bottle waste. It's at this year's event and we're going to show you how it's coming up. And right after the break, Bob McGuire, he's going to tell us if more snow is on the way in May. Yep, uh-huh, you heard that right. The full forecast when we come back.